continue to look at the ACT 2017-18 math test but here we're going to address questions 11 through 15. Question 11. Students studied motion observed a cart rolling at a constant rate along a straight line. The table below gives the distance d feet the cart was from a reference point at one second intervals from t equal to zero seconds to t equal to five seconds and we have a table here which of the following equations represents the relationship between d and t so to look at the relationship let's look at this is the independent and this is the dependent so let's see what's happening in each instance so we have an increase of one at every turn in the independent and then we have for the dependent we have an increase of six so what that means is that for every one unit change in the independent the dependent increases by six so that lets me know that there is a ratio of the relationship between the independent and dependent is 6t. Now, let's look at where we're starting off. So when t is equal to 0, d is 14. So we have a starting point at 14. So you either have 6t plus 14 or 14 plus 6t. 6t plus 14. Okay. Now, the length of a rectangle with area 54 square centimeters is 9 centimeters what is the perimeter of the rectangle so the first thing we're going to do is let's make an attempt at drawing a rectangle okay so we have 9 centimeters here and then we have let's call this x for the width so the area is length multiplied by width we have 54 square centimeters is 9 centimeters multiplied by the width. So we're going to divide both sides by 9 centimeters to get the width. So 6 centimeters is our width. Now perimeter is length plus breadth multiplied by 2 or length plus width depends on how you see it. So this is going to be 2, 9 plus 6, which is 2 times 15. That's going to give us 30 centimeters. In the figure below, C is the intersection of the line AD and the line BE. If it can be determined, what is the measure of BAC? So this is the angle we're interested in. Now, at the point of intersection, we have vertical angles. So this is going to be 45 degrees. So now what we have is a situation where we have a triangle. We have a triangle where one of the angles is 45. Another angle is 35 and we have a missing angle. So the sum of all angles in a triangle is 180. So we're going to have 35 degrees plus 45 degrees plus, let's call that X, the unknown angle, call it X, plus X equal to 180 degrees. So we have 80 degrees plus X equal to 180 degrees. I'm going to subtract 80 degrees from both sides to get the value of x. So we have x, this is actually not required. So we have x equal to 100 degrees. So Anton drew a circle graph below describing his time spent at school in one day. His teacher said that the number of hours listed were correct but the central angle measures for the sectors were not correct. What should the central angle measure for the core subject sector be? So let's see. We have 
how many hours all together we got 4 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 so we have 9 hours all together now here's a trick that we could use because we're dealing with a circle the sum of all angles in a circle so we have sum of angles in a circle is going to be equal to 360 degrees so what we have is that 9 hours will be covering 360 degrees so 1 hour is going to be equivalent to 40 degrees so let's see we're looking at core subjects let's pay attention to that core subjects so we have 4 hours for core subjects it's going to give us 40 degrees times 4 which is 160 degrees now another way to look at this is that the fraction of the whole day that is spent on core subjects is 4 hours out of 9 and then we multiply that by 360 as well so this is 1 this is 40 which is 160 degrees so it depends on which one you prefer they get you to the same answer number five this month Kami sold 70 figurines in two sizes the large figurines sold for $12 each and the small figurines sold for $8 each the amount of money he received from the sales of the large figurines was equal to the amount he received from the small figurines how many large figurines did he sell so let's say um, we're going to use some we're going to create a system here first thing we're going to do is let x let's call that the large figurines and y is for the small figurines and total number of figurines is going to be x plus y and then so here's our system we have x plus y equal to 70 and then the cost of the large is going to be 12 times x and the cost of the small is going to be 8 times x but what we're told here is that the total amount made from each one is the same so we have 12x equal to 8y so now we have this system the first thing i'm going to do here or i recommend you do because we're looking for the value of x which is the large figurines i'm just going to rewrite this first equation here with in terms of x so i'm just going to say x is equal to 70 minus y so now that i've done that i'm going to substitute that value in the second equation so everywhere i have x i'm going to replace with 70 minus y so 12 multiplied by 70 minus y is equal to 8y so i'm going to distribute this it's going to give me 840 minus 12y equal to 8y so we add 12y to both sides of the equation and we have 840 equal to 20y so now we divide both sides by 20 so we have y is equal to 42 so that tells me how many small figurines i had so let's go back and find the value of x it's going to be 70 minus 42 which is 28 figurines so we have 28 large figurines